thank you. Welcome to our video today on dynamic segmentation. Uh, in this video, we're going to give an overview on how dynamic segmentation works, as well as how to configure the switch to prepare for tunneling and to configure local user roles on the switch. Before we get started, I wanted to give a brief overview of how dynamic segmentation works, specifically with the different portions. I mean, we have this term called dynamic segmentation, but what is it? There's a dynamic aspect portion to it, which comes to play with the user roles. Having this flexible user role and policy assigned whenever a user connects on demand allows the flexibility in the network to be able to assign user policy on the fly. The segmentation part comes in with tunneling. With dynamic segmentation, we can do either port-based or role-based tunneling. These tunnels are sent from the switch port to an Aruba mobility controller. The reason we want to do this is one, it centralizes policy to the controller. Two, we're allowed to access the policy, the controller's applications such as the firewall and traffic deep packet inspection or traffic analysis tool. Previously, this feature, these features were called per port tunneled node and per, per user tunneled node. Now they've been rena renamed port-based tunneling and user-based tunneling. With port-based tunneling, everything on a port is statically tunneled back to an Aruba controller. With the role-based tunneling, the tunnel is based upon the user's role. So a user, such as an employee, a contractor, or a guest, they will be tunneled according to their user role and have specific policy according to what is set in the user role, which is either existing on the switch or downloaded from ClearPass. Some of the key differences between port-based tunneling and role-based tunneling are that when we came out with port-based tunneling two years ago, you could only tunnel to one controller. You can have set a backup controller in the configuration, but you only get that one controller. Uh, with user-based tunneling, we're taking uh, advantage of the clustering technology in Aruba OS 8.0. So when a user comes online, a primary tunnel is formed to the controller and then a backup tunnel is created as well. That way you have the high availability and failover in the case of uh, losing connection between the primary controller and the, the user. Additionally, with role-based tunneling, we're actually authenticating users at the switch. The authentication is brought down to the switch. And so what we do is we turn on authentication on the ports, and users now can come online with their laptops or with their IoT devices. And when these devices are authenticated at the switch, that checks with ClearPass in our case. And in ClearPass, there's policy set. So if the user authenticates with the correct policy, it is past a VSA or vendor specific attribute which contains what user role in the case of local user roles that the user will be placed on. So Aruba has a concept of user roles that based on a user and what role they have in the network they are assigned certain policy within the network. So maybe an employee would access certain parts of the network or a contractor would only have a limited more limited access than an employee. Uh, different IoT devices can have user roles as well. So you can use MAC authentication on the switch to authenticate via MAC address the device, whether it's a security camera, a card reader, a printer, you know, any kind of device with a MAC address that can connect to the network, that can be also given certain policy based on the user role. So with role-based tunneling, now a specific user on a specific device is going to be get specific role and policy and then if configured, will be tunneled back to a controller. So with user-based tunneling, there are two roles that we need to be concerned about. There's a primary role and a secondary role. The primary role is the user role that will exist on the switch if you're using a local user role. Now, we also introduced a feature called downloadable user roles where that exact same syntax that you would have on the switch will be in a ClearPass policy and passed via a VSA called HPE CPPM role. And then you just set the switch to download the role 
any role within the network. So now we're taking, so instead of creating thousands of local user roles across a large network on all these different switches, now we can just create all the user roles within ClearPass and have the switch download them dynamically. So that's kind of the difference between local user roles and downloadable user roles. Local user roles will be predefined on the switch, and then downloadable user roles will be configured in ClearPass, and this switch needs to be configured to download that from ClearPass. So I'm going to show both steps, local user roles and downloadable user roles. But specific to this video, I'm going to cover local user roles. In the next part of this video series, we will talk about downloadable user roles and how to configure user-based tunneling with it. One thing specific to user-based tunneling is the interaction between the device, the switch, and the controller. We can think of tunneling users similar to how an AP interacts in the wireless world. In this case, by tunneling a wired user, basically the switch becomes a wired access point. So with a wireless access point with Aruba, it, uh, it forms a tunnel to the controller. Now we can do the same with wired traffic. All wired traffic will be tunneled back to the controller, and now we have wired and wireless policy all being handled by the controller and then being able to uh, provide the role-based access at the controller level in connection with ClearPass. With that being said, let's look at how to configure local user roles on the switch and how to set up your tunnels. To begin to configure user-based tunneling, we first need to configure the switch to authenticate. So first we'll need to authenticate it to a RADIUS server and we'll need to configure the RADIUS server settings. So here we're configuring the RADIUS server host, which is the ClearPass instance. So we'll need to add in the IP address to the RADIUS server, as well as turn on dynamic authentication and a time, set up a time window for the connection. The time window is the amount of time that the dynamic authorization stays current. So setting it to zero here means there is no time limit. So then we enter in the RADIUS server key. And we should be configured here to start configuring our port access. So here we're setting up port access to use 8021X on a uh, port 1 slash 48. We use that using the AAA authentication port dash access. First, we need to enable EAP radius. And then we configure it to use 8021X on the port 1 slash 48, since this is a two member 3810 stack. Then we turn it on the port access authenticator to active, save the configuration, check the configuration. So after we validate the switch configuration, we can then start to configure the tunneling functionality. So first we're going to add the controller IP, which the uh, tunnels will be tunneled to. So this, in our case, this is a standalone, but in a cluster you would use the master IP. You also turn on the mode as role-based as opposed to port-based. Then we'll start configuring the local user role so first off, we're going to demo how to use local user roles with this. So we're creating a local user role called test role, and then applying VLAN ID 15. So the users in this user role will go to VLAN ID, and then we enable it. One thing we forgot to do there was add in the tunnel node command. This is the command that does all the magic. So that is the tunnel node tunnel dash node dash server dash redirect and then it goes to a secondary role which is the user role on the controller so for this purpose we're just going to use the default authenticated role on the controller but you can use anything and apply policy to that so then we'll validate it in the configuration and make sure it's uh, configured appropriately and you can see up there that we have the appropriate commands in there. So the next step is to configure ClearPass to use the to pass along a VSA which contains the user role name that we configured on the switch. 
if you're using local user roles. So first we've created a 802.1x service and then in that service we'll need to create a policy. So in this service we're just using Ethernet and local users and then we're going to use the local user repository to authenticate our users on. And then in enforcement we'll create a policy for this. So we have a, a policy here and in that policy it contains a profile. And so within the in profile and within the profile we have a rule where the user when it authenticates will have a role in clear pass. And once it authenticates that role, it'll pass this VFA here, which is HPE user role and test role. So then once these uh, once these rules match, it will pass that VSA or that user role back down to the switch after the user authenticates. Uh, it's important to make sure we have the updated HPE dictionary, so we can do that under dictionaries, radius. You can download the new dictionary from the Aruba Network support site. So then our configuration in ClearPass, we'll need to create the local user. In this one, it's called Duratest with a role of an employee. And so once that user logs in from the client, ClearPass will apply the profile to it and then pass the user role down to the switch. So here we're just checking the local user, making sure we have the right role. We also need to make sure that we have the appropriate uh, credentials for our authenticating device to log into. So we need to go to devices, enter in the IP address of our switch, and then we have to give it a name, of course, and then we have to give the shared secret validate the shared secret. So this needs to match the configuration that we have on the switch. That way we can uh, send the radius requests to ClearPass and ClearPass can respond. The only thing ClearPass is doing acting as a radius server and passing along this VSA. And then once the switch sees that VSA and that the users um, applied to the network can access the network, then it will start tunneling back to the controller. So we can verify that by running the command show port access clients. And we can see that the uh, user here got a user role and the MAC address and which port it's on and what VLAN. We can see the show tunnel numbers or state command. We can see that the uh, management tunnel has been formed to the controller at 10.5.8.6. And then once the users come on, we'll start forming user tunnels as well, so which can be to different members of a cluster. In this case, we're running a standalone controller, so it's on both. Now this is with the show tunneled over, sir, uh, show tunneled over server information command. This is the bucket list. So this is kind of the hashing algorithm that different users can go to different controllers within a cluster. And so we can also look at statistics with the tunnels and, and for troubleshooting and make sure the uh, heartbeats are increasing uh, both on the transmit and receive so we can confirm that the tunnel is working appropriately. So we can see that the uh, numbers are increasing. So that looks good there. Then we can verify users using the show tunneled node user all command. And we can see the users tunneled. So we see here we have the user, the MAC address of the laptop we're using, port 1 slash 48, and it's using the secondary role authenticated. Now if we go to the controller, we can also check the commands here by using the show tunneled node dash manager command tunneled dash users. And we can see the user listed here. We can see the tunneled user Mac, which is the laptop Mac, the uh, tunneled node Mac, which is the switch Mac. We can also see the GRE key, the tunnel index, and any flags associated with the tunnel, especially which VLAN the user is in. We here at Aruba hope this video has been helpful. Tune in next time to learn how to configure this with downloadable user roles. So we'll show you how to configure user-based tunneling using downloadable user rules.